I got a question. So build, building on that, um, you know, Rich mentioned, uh, you know, reunion arena. So my thought on an all-star game, and again, I've, I've always kind of had this thought is like, could I, I mean, again, I know it would be tough to kind of market it, to get it in any, any, any leagues arena, you know, I mean, any, any team's arena, you know, you're, you're looking to maybe just get, you know, 1500, 2000 at a game for it, but could you market it to, any of, you know, the, 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 the big major arenas that are around some of the cities. So for like, for instance, for us, for Mesquite in Dallas, could you have it in Dallas at the American Airlines Center? You know, obviously you have to pay for the rent that night. You know, you get that, you get to rent the arena for the night, but could you market it? Could you push for trying to sell out and now you're expanding trying to maybe get eight to ten thousand and now it's a big thing the american airlines arena who uh or american airlines center that has you know the dallas stars that has the dallas mavericks you know trying to maybe push for that as well at their games just little clips there um or or, or you know i mean you go to to anywhere anywhere around the country you know i mean um and try to put it in a in a in a major arena that holds or a, a major um, uh, stadium arena that holds maybe 15,000, 20,000 and market it to that, you know, give it, I don't know, six months of marketing, a year even of marketing and try to do that. I just think as a player, I mean, if you were to get invited to that and you were to go into that and see, I mean, oh, yeah. that's yeah. what we all kind of grew up watching on, on, you know, in our cities, like, like, I mean, Rich is the same, same for me watching the sidekicks at reunion arena in front of 15,000 people, you know, lights, man, you couldn't get tickets. It feel special, you know? Yeah. So kind of along those lines, you mentioned the exhibition games before, like the international games. One thing that really got me hyped up before they came into the league was when the Metro stars, before they were even the Metro stars, they had those exhibition games in Canada and they were getting six, 7,000 people a game. Mm -hmm. And it was this great broadcast, this great atmosphere. And of course, obviously things turn, but I think it's a good idea. I mean, if they're, if you're able to do that kind of a thing in a Canadian atmosphere that doesn't have indoor soccer as a real sport, um, and, you know, like here in Milwaukee, the, the wave play in the, um, what's now the UW Milwaukee Panther arena used to be U.S. Cellular arena used to be Mecca used to be something else. It was built in 1960 and that's where the Milwaukee Bucks used to play. That was where their championship games happened. Um, then, the Bucks built the Brad, you know, the Bradley Center was built for them, and the Wave actually moved over to the Bradley Center for a number of years, um, in late '80s and, and '90s, and and uh, you know that's now gone, and there's a new five hundred billion dollars or million dollar thing, um, but yeah, that would be really interesting. I, I think there's certain cities that could definitely pull it off, um, and yeah, like you said, you would have to market it really well. You would have to. My thought about about having an All Star game is, you can't just throw it together and go. Hey, we're starting the season. Let's say you know December first, the season starts. Let's say February first, we go. Hey, three weekend, three weeks from now, we're going to do an all-star game, and this is the play. You just can't do. It. You, you got to have it, you know, well marketed and well maintained and well advertised, so you can get that. You know, I think Milwaukee says they have to get twenty five hundred fans to break even mm -hmm. on the rent, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, costs above that, they have to go more than that. But uh, you know, if if you're looking at something like that, you need to be able to like, like you said, six months to a year probably and, and market it really well and, and spend some money kind of almost on a gamble that you're going to make it back in, in that attendance. And I hate to use the word exposure. I'm a musician. So the word exposure just means play for free in the music world. You know, and I know soccer is a little bit of that. You know, there's, there's, you know, what if we got a pay-per-view deal? What if we got on ESPN? What if we got this? What about the exposure? It's like exposure doesn't sell tickets, but marketing sure does. If you yeah, could spend think, six months marketing that, I think I think it might work. I like that idea. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Like specifically, for example, if, if we were to choose Baltimore, just you know, throwing it out there, it'd be a great idea. A, a good way to market it would be like, hey, we're we're coming home to the Royal Farms Arena or something, right? And then market that, and then the namesake, not you know, market it for a year. When we're getting closer to it. Maybe look for a sponsor. Like, look, we've gotten all this traction. Maybe you want to slap your name on it two months before we actually 
know, announce it where it's going to be or whatever. And this will be the official name sponsored by whatever. So I think, I mean, if you get the traction and the marketing done properly, I'm pretty sure sponsors will come and then they will help. Absolutely. Out. I agree. Uh, but that would throw out Utica uh, because there really isn't any big, big arenas around. I mean, we have the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, which is like 40,000, but um but yeah absolutely I, I think i think marketing would be key for that um but yeah big time arena could, could you do it in a, in a in a place that doesn't have indoor soccer right now i know that's been thrown around by people and at first thought it's like yeah you kind of cringe you i don't want to do that but if you had six months to market it or a year indoor, it would get packed it would get super packed in mexico yeah. right the, the exactly the, the national team had their games where it was Bakersfield, right? They had the one in Bakersfield, yeah. and then they had the other one um, in Iowa, was it? No, not Iowa. Um, Boise. Idaho. Yeah. Boise. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think it would be awesome, um, and I think the league could do it. And if you don't, like, if we were to say, like, this year, not do it this year, but we're announcing it, hey, All-Star is back, All-Star game is back, 2021 2022 season it's going to be you know this time in you know i don't know march 2022 and we're looking at yeah one of those you know i i, I think we could I, I think we could really do it the one thing that you guys probably followed as well that we did well with the sidekicks was the pfl put on a futsal um you know uh exhibition series of exhibitions at the allen event center and the PFL, obviously, that, that entity came in and ran everything. I mean, staffed it, uh, brought, paid for the teams to come in, you know, how, uh, put them up in hotels, all that stuff, changed the floor and did all that. But, you know, on that one, that was a marketing of, I remember hearing about it uh, probably around, like, August, maybe end of July, August, and we put it together in November to play before – you know, the season and try uh, trying to get like some, like almost leading up to the sidekick season and getting some notoriety for the sidekick. So all of the sidekick players played in it. And, and that was a great thing. We had 4,200 that night and it was, it was awesome. Uh, obviously a lot of us, you know, like myself, I never played futsal professionally. So it was, it was just wonderful to be out there and it really seemed like it caught on. And like I said, the PFL did that. They probably were talking about it a lot more and organizing it, but in terms of marketing and putting it out there, it was about a three-month thing. So I think for sure if you gave it six months to a year, I think the league could really do it. Obviously, the league is tied up with so many other issues. Yeah. It is tough, but I really do think, I mean, obviously, I mean, give it a give it a kind of a, a, a like a pilot year, you know, give it a trial year and see how the first one goes. Maybe you do it in just anybody's arena who can book a date on a weekend. And then see if you get some good publicity from it, see if you can get some good moments from it, and then maybe push for another one a year later. But I I, I think it'd be awesome. I really do. I like going I like going all out with it. You know, it's take like a regular season. I, I don't know what's gonna happen this upcoming season when we're gonna start and finish and all that, but a regular season goes roughly November ish to early, you know, late April, early May. Um, take like March first and say, you know what, next season we're doing an all star game somewhere around March, and it's going to be on TV, sponsored in a big arena, you know, whatever. You know, you just build the whole thing up and and do it. Uh, you know, go kind of go big or go home kind of thing. You know, be sponsorship cool. money lined up and and just say we're doing this and we're making it big. And even if we even if it's not a long term thing, this one day is going to be this big giant place where everyone makes out. I like it. What would be really cool is if – I don't know if you guys follow, like, baseball or anything, but they have, like, that All-Star weekend, the All-Star weekend, yep. where they'll yep. have, like, totally for it. come out and everything come out. So, MASL has youth tournaments. So, why not make it, like, an All-Star week where they have the youth tournaments in that same arena? The families are going to be there. Uh, you know, just market it right. Families are there. Fans will go there. It would just be a fun time. Well, they did They did the youth tournaments last season. They did them at right. certain arenas, I think. One was in San Diego. One was in Utica. One was in – Two of Dallas. them were here. Oh, two. two. Here. Oh, well. 
Oh, it's such a small field. You got you can have two games going. No, no, at the same they time. weren't even in that stadium. <laughs> they weren't even in that arena. Oh, <laughs> they're in the, the Maryland Soccerplex, and the other one was in NARC, 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 which is like a, a rec center. But I mean, yeah, maybe have like some of the teams that won or something come to the the All Star Arena and maybe do like an exhibition right. game or something like that. Yeah. Right, like show the trophy off, like make it like a whole week thing where it's like, uh, you know, the youth tournaments, little sporting or like all-star challenges, the, see the champion team or whatever, because it's in, it's in J- June when they do it. Mm. Yeah, they do it in June. So, I mean, you might want to move it to July because the season just ended. But just a good way to, that way you get to see everyone's number, you get to see how every player performed by the end of the season. So then you can, you can truly invite the, the top players. This has been In The Box. Make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell icon so you can follow along as we put out new clips of our live show. And if you want to catch our live show, make sure you head over to our Facebook group page. We have a Friday night live show every Friday, 8.30 Central Time, 9.30 Eastern Time. Now, we'll be there unless something happens. Everybody get up, everybody get up, everybody get down, everybody get up, everybody get up, everybody.